I'm actually really excited to have you here today because, Susan, because you are different from all the other women that we've had here in that your career has been about creative, which is very different. A lot of women, A, are not in the creative field, and B, don't rise to the level of leadership that you have in the creative world. So I'm super excited to have you here. Well, thank you. What are people looking for when they're hiring uh, new people into the industry. It's a little bit different because you're yeah. looking for creative people, but you run the you run the agency too. So yeah. um, it's interesting because by the time you get to me, unless it's a favor for like a family friend or something, I'm just I'm usually closing the deal versus wondering if this person's right for the agency, especially young people. Um, but if you reach out and want to want to talk to me with in what I would call an informative interview, I try to say yes if I'm available. When I do that, if somebody impresses me, I quickly put them in, you know, to, to the HR people and say, just, you know, take 10 minutes with this person. Mm -hmm. And usually what makes me lift them up a little bit is incredible curiosity and a sense of a work ethic. I had a young woman come in and she basically said she took a job with um, someone in advertising, but he didn't have an office, so she just had to work remotely. But she was doing things like doing trade searches, and I'm like, what, what, are, what are you, she was doing everything out of her little apartment. And I was like, okay, that's amazing. I don't know whether you're a project manager or you know, could run a company, but I think I look for little clues that they're gonna be interesting, generous people. Well, how versatile is that, that she could actually motivate herself to do all that work from her apartment, too? Right. That's amazing. You know, I started off as, like, the bathroom break girl for receptionists, and, but it was interesting. Even in that, I was like, right, how can I, how can I stand out? You know, what can I do? And so I, what I did is I set up informative interviews with all the heads of the departments right. and went in and just chatted, you know, interviewed them. And a, a week later, all the top people in the company knew who I was. Which made everybody else go, who, who is she, why, how does she know all the top people in the company? I just, I just went and met them. Um, so I think you can do, you know, instead of waiting for someone to ask you in, you know, be smart and be helpful. Right. Just answering the phones, it was funny because I was like, all right, I can't believe I have a degree in journalism and I'm answering phones, you know, part time, basically. But I was like, if that's my job, I'm going to do it as best the best way I can. And so I learned each department floor, like what the personality was, and I would change up how I'd answer the phone depending on which which place you were calling in. So if you was the global executive floor, I was very much like, BBDO, how can I direct your call? And then if it was the creative floor, it's like, yo, BBDO, what's going on? Who you wanna talk to? You know, but I just, I just, I think just try to be different, you know, try to look like you care. But I do think, I've told people, I'm like, you know, where's that place where you lose time? where you know you sit down to do something and you look up and five hours have gone by and you're like, oh my gosh, I, I felt like five minutes. And if you find that, try to figure out how to get paid to do that. And because I do think that we should pursue things that feel good, that we just enjoy. And I got, I got pretty close with advertising because it is creative. It's, if, you, if you had to do drama as a business, I think the, on the creative side, I work with actors, I work with musicians, you, you have to write plays in your mind. So I feel like I, I sort of followed my advice. I, I found something that, um, you know, I, I can find those moments of joy where I lose time. It's so funny that you just took me there because I was going to say or ask you, do you find that that's helpful for you, that drama background? Because you're constantly kind of out there talking and, and making speeches, but also yeah. writing scripts. I think, I think early on drama helped me because I looked at brands as like a role. So like you, if you're getting into character, so you, I think it made me be whatever we call this authentic to brands, but to really look for the truth in the brand and what that brand's character would be. And it's sort of the same exercise that I would use when I was studying a part or, or trying to find that role. I also think it's, um, you know, I'm Susan, but I play a CCO, you know, and so <laughs> a, lot, <laughs> a lot of times if I don't think I can do the job, I'm like, it's just a role, you know, just get out there and be the actor until you can figure out if it's really you. And yeah, it's helped a lot. And and being able to get on stage and understand what it's like to lose. I mean, like, 
going blank is it happens to everybody and I think if you've been on stage and you've dealt with going blank you know it's not the end of the world. It's so funny you say that my my son does a lot of theater and he always says what happens if I forget my line or I don't know and I say the only one who's gonna know is you no yeah. one else knows what comes next really so yeah. don't worry about it just keep going. He's it's part of being creative I think is in that moment f f trying to figure out how to solve a problem that you're desperately in. Um, it's very difficult when people are criticizing creative ideas not to think, well, that's my idea and you're trying to, you know, screw with it basically. So, but how do you do that? How do you listen to commentary and then move to the next step of where you need that thing to go to sell it or to make mm -hmm. it great or to kill it and say, then it's not the right idea? I've just seen over time that you know, there's a lot of work out there that people love that I don't care for. There's a lot of work that I love that people don't care for. Um, so I've tried to, one, be a little bit more open and generous to the creatives. I found in my last job where I was closer to the day-to-day -day ECDs that we went to, instead of previewing work, we went to reviewing. So after it was done, we would sit and just look and say, what did we learn? I think this business, your reputation, your career, your agency, it's over time. It's not one piece of work is going to make you brilliant and or, or light the agency up or destroy it. And if you don't give the people that work for you some autonomy and some sense that they can go with their voice, uh, I think it stymies them. Is there any other work that you love that you you know that you and for for what reason? Like, is there anything mm -hmm. that you want us to include in this video for people to see and say that's banner work that I'm really proud of? That whether it's my work or my right. team's work. Right. I think that you know it's interesting. We have a thing at FCB called Four Five Six, and it's a scale that we wrote uh, two years ago about how we want to look at work and our ambition for the work. And really for me, this, the things that I admire the most are ideas with vision. So, you know, like starting with the M&Ms that I worked on, at, my partner Steve Rudder and I got the assignment in 1996. And instead of coming back with a TV commercial, we came back with this idea to create a comedic ensemble with the colors mm -hmm. and potentially get into licensing and you know, build it that way because they didn't have a huge budget for an American icon brand. You know, so we came back with that whole vision. I don't, I don't know how we knew it was something interesting. You know, and now I walk past the Times Square store and I'm like, we just sat in our office and thought of that, <laughs> you know, and we had incredible clients that wanted to go on the same journey. So that one, that's amazing when you have work that you remember the day you started creating it. And I think about all the people that have worked on it and still today are working on it. Um, but I, but I, I like, I like things with vision that keep going. I feel like we have too much start and stop in our industry yeah. and we expect people to follow all these turns and, you know, it, if it's not new, it's not interesting. And I think it's, we're like people. It's like, I think ideas become more interesting the longer you can keep them alive and keep twisting them and moving them, but keep that equity in there. I mean, I think they're so much richer. Okay, I have one last question mm. for you. Is there anything that put you sort of on your hind legs or you said, ooh, I didn't see that one coming. This one really got me. I think marketing and advertising has, when I got into the business, was always considered an investment. It was an investment. It was on the line the, over here on the, the financial sheets that said investment. And I think it has slid over to a spend. And that makes me incredibly nervous because I think if we think of marketing as something that's good to do but not have to do, we're going to see our economy hurt. If I've got three shoes and they all cost about the same to make. Mm -hmm. One of them I put a little swoosh on and I can sell it for twice as much. That's what we do. And by the way, when I sell it for twice as much, I can reinvest in my people, I can reinvest in R&D, mm -hmm. I can make better choices, I can give people physical spaces that they want to work in. So it's not just about the money, the money, the money. It's about when we have a value that gets us out of a commodity or are barely making mm -hmm. a profit, we get stronger as a country, as, a, as an economy, and our people live better. Right. So it's, it's, it seems kind of ephemeral, I think, when you talk about brands sometimes. It's kind of nice to have. But when I really think about the added value of a brand on top of a product, it, 
it has the power to do amazing things. And and the more we devalue brands, I think the more we devalue our entire economy. All right. Thank you so much You're for welcome. spending this time You're with welcome. me. I really appreciate it.